the more you know about gems, the more you realize you don't know yeah. anything about yeah. gems. <laughs> like, there's always something it new stops. and interesting. It never, ever stops. <laughs> and I found more jobs in this industry and eventually came to work for the gem A myself. So you work in, mostly in instruments? Hey everyone, we're at the 2022 Tucson Gem and Mineral Show and we have a really fun guest for you guys today. This is Samantha Lloyd. She is the Gem Instruments Manager at the Gemological Association of Great Britain. And we're gonna talk today about something that you guys ask us about a lot, which is how to identify gemstones using a variety of techniques. So we'll talk about set gems, loose gems, different ways that you can identify them. And she has some fun stuff to teach us. Hi. <laughs> How did you get started in the business? Good question. In the UK, most of it is about making a good cup of tea. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I made a good cup of tea, apparently. <laughs> when you're in retail, jewelry retail, things get super busy and we all just need to relax with a hot cup of tea. So I spent a lot of time around gemstones, a lot of time around jewelry, and a lot of time around really wonderful clients. So I asked my boss if I could study a bit more and try and understand it, and she did. She put me on a course and, and let me learn. So I moved to London. I worked for a gem dealer and I, I handled gemstones day in, day out. I found more jobs in this industry and eventually came to work for the gem A myself. That is great. So one thing you said earlier was you realized you didn't know anything. One thing that I have realized is the more you know about gems, the more you realize you don't know anything about gems. Like there's always something to learn. I think your professional history is a testament to like the need and the desire that I think we all have to keep learning because there's always something new never stops. and interesting. It never ever stops. <laughs> so you work in, mostly in instruments? I do, yeah. So I run Gem A Instruments. It's a shop dedicated to equipment for gem testing. And it's one of the only few around. It's quite a niche thing, but it it, for us in our industry, it's, it's vital. Scientifically, there are things we can measure to understand what a gem is. And so we can use that equipment and some of it really basic stuff, but without it, we can't prove, we can't identify. You, you might have something that was passed down to you or somebody says, this is a satellite. How do we prove it? Mm -hmm. How do we know? So mm -hmm. that might be what we do today. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Let's get into it. So I have a box for you. And there's a clue. I can be the heaviest of the heavy or the lightest of the light, but you can't tell by looking at me. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> I have some suspicions. So one of the first things that I like to do is to just observe and hold the gems and kind of like experience it with the, the five senses. So I think you're onto something here. Let me um let me drop this into your hand okay. and see what you know. Okay, very light. Not what you're light as a feather. <laughs> the lightest of the light. <laughs> Feel this one. Much heavier. We look at it and we assume so much, but we can gain loads from our other senses. So a lot of people call that the heft test. Yes, heft is a, a sense that we get when we expect the weight of a gem in our hand, essentially. You looked at that and you thought, okay, it's going to weigh about this much. Mm -hmm. and when I dropped it in your hand, it didn't, am I right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it barely weighed anything in comparison. So that heft or that feeling of that weight in our hands can help us to understand whether something is one gem material or, or another. Mm -hmm. We can do this far more accurately. We can use gemstones properties to measure the exact heft or density, specifically their weight versus their volume, their specific gravity, to identify gem material. Okay, Samantha, you have a contraption here. Tell us what this is. This is called a hydrostatic weighing set. It's not as complex as it sounds, <laughs> I promise. It's a dangly little wire frame sat on top of my portable scales. We're using it to be able to weigh a gem material in water because with a simple calculation using the weight of a gem material in air versus the weight of the gem material in water, we can calculate this gem's specific gravity. Each gem material can have a different SG. That formula that Samantha just described, it's a reflection of what's referred to as the Archimedes principle. Archimedes discovered in his bath that 
an object placed in water or immersed in water would displace an equal volume of water to itself. We do have a very simple calculation. So one to remember is air, the weight in air, divided by the weight in air minus the weight in water is our specific gravity. So this is here to calculate that for us. All we have to do is switch our scales on and measure our gemstone in air. All right, let's start with the cabochon. So I'm gonna use my fingers for this because it's nice and large. Now to weigh something in air is really just weighing it. <laughs> so I'm gonna pop that on the scales now. Looks like 1.965. So initially, I'm looking at that thinking, wow, that's quite a large stone for 1 carat 96. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really an important thing to do. If we don't have a posh setup like this, we can just guess. We can look at that and say, wow, that's, that's quite large mm -hmm. for, for just under 2 carats. Now, we're going to weigh this in water and gently pop it on this little tray inside. You can probably see that the tray I've put it on, little balance, has some holes in it so that it's not taking any water tension and it's linked up and resting on this which comes down and is resting on the scales. So once I've teared that to zero, the only weight that's now reading on this is the weight of that yellow stone. Which is 0 0.120 current. Significantly lighter. Much lighter. Those are the numbers that we need for our calculation. Okay. Go back, we remember that we need air, weight in air, which was 1.965, divided by the weight in air minus the weight in water. So 1.845 is now our number. So our new calculation, shortened, is 1.965 divided by 1.845. And that is 1.07. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> so knowing what I know about SGs of a variety of gems, this is a relatively low SG. There's one that comes to mind that is very light with a low SG and that's amber. Fantastic, spot on. Let's test the blue gemstone. This mystery blue gemstone. Do you want to do it? I would love that. All right, so significantly heavier than the amber, this is 3.620 carats. Okay, let's. Here we go. 2.825. So weight in air, 3.620, divided by weight in air minus weight in water, which is 2.83. So 3.62 minus 2.83 is about 4.55. Okay, so what does that mean? It's a high SG. It relatively. is high, yeah, it is high. And we can choose to look up uh, the SGs of of blue materials. We don't have to know all of these in our head. We actually are <laughs> very lucky that there are resources online and there's m multiple books that have these resources in. So looking here in order of specific gravity, uh, there are some blue materials that have specific gravities of around about 4.5, which is particularly high for a gem material. What do you think to this, this range here? So zircon is a gemstone that has kind of a significant range of 3.9 to 4.8 and blue zircon is a very popular gemstone. It has this fire that is really easy to identify. So based on that, I'm thinking, I'm thinking zircon is our answer. Not just because I pointed to no. it in the book. <laughs> So yeah, this is a zircon and it fits perfectly within our range. So if I give you a set of scales and some gem materials that look similar, I wonder if you can give me an idea about which one is which. You ready for your next box? I'm ready. Okay. Oh, I see a cert. Okay, and then we have four loose, colorless, round, brilliant stones. These could be many things. There are a lot of diamond simulants out there. So you've got just a set of scales, that's all you have. But the things you do know are what you might expect a diamond to weigh. So these are all round, brilliant cut stones. And most round, brilliant cut stones on the market are cut to certain proportions so that they look like diamonds. Now, these might not be diamonds, but if they were, based on their specific gravity, about 3.52 for a diamond, they would weigh a certain amount based on how big they are. So if I tell you that these stones are both eight millimeters in diameter, what would you expect it to weigh as a diamond? 
about uh, two and a half, three carats. Brilliant. But something tells me that those are not diamonds. <laughs> Give it a go. <laughs> so how are you going to tell me whether they are or not? Um, I'm going to weigh them. Go on then. So significantly lower, 1.575. Okay, so that is 3.385 carats. So double what you were expecting. What? Yeah, but they're the same size. So these are two different materials, very obviously. This one has a higher density, higher specific gravity. Okay, so what I know is that CZ, cubic zirconia, has a high specific gravity. It does. So that would be my, uh, my guess for this little guy. Great guess. And then synthetic moissanite, which has a relatively close SG to diamond, but lower at about a 3.4. 3.2 approximately for moissanite. About 3.2. The CZ is noticeably different to the diamond. Mm -hmm. If you do this on a daily basis, you'll actually feel very easily that that's not a diamond and it won't trick you at all. But the dispersion with the CZ is very similar to a diamond. It's only a little bit more. Now, moissanite, which has very similar specific gravity, is likely to feel like a diamond in your hand. Mm -hmm. You know, we're only human, there's yeah. only so much we can feel. But you could use scales and you could make a comparison based on its cut, or you could add in extra properties and, and look at the dispersion. As we move these round, you get all the colours of the rainbow mm -hmm. really flashing at you, whereas this one, quite similar to what we might expect from a diamond. Mm -hmm. We've not identified, but we've got very close to understanding what these diamond simulants are and what they are not. Okay, so I see a diamond right there. Maybe we should weigh that for comparison. Sure. That's what I was going to guess, because it looked about six millimetres. Yep. And so 1.020 carats. Maybe your diamond senses are tuned <laughs> in. <laughs> it is diamond, and it does possess the same properties. This is a laboratory-grown diamond. The properties are matching that of diamond, but when we synthesize a material, those properties should be exactly the same as its natural counterpart. So when we test diamond, a lot of the optical tests that we do and the physical tests that we do like this should show us the same results as whether it's natural or whether it's lab grown. Okay, so we have seen all loose gemstones. Many of the gemstones that we see on the market are actually set in jewelry. How do you approach those viewing these techniques in mind? So. One thing we can't always do is identify a material that's set because there are limitations that the mount provides. But using this principle, we can tell lots about that material. Um, in fact, we could identify or estimate the weight of the material just by measuring it and using certain calculations. Another box for Another you. Another box. Okay, so we have a millimeter gauge and a faceted oval blue gemstone in a ring. Another really simple tool. We're not doing anything complex here, but we are just understanding or getting a feel for our gemstones and their weight properties. So I'm gonna tell you what this gemstone is this mm -hmm. time. But what I want you to tell me is how much it might weigh. Yeah. <laughs> weight has a big impact on value. And so the value could vary hugely depending on how much this particular stone weighs. We're not so bothered about the, the outer stones in this particular ring because they're much smaller, so they don't control the main value of this ring. This center stone is blue topaz. Here is your measuring gauge. We're gonna show you how to accurately measure something to two decimal places or more. We need to get at least a length a width and a depth. Okay. If we pop our ring between those two teeth, we can rest them on the girdle of the stone. And once we're happy that we're at the furthest points of the stone, we can take our reading from there. Be careful not to read that as four because it's gone round twice. So 14 millimeters, but for us, that's not quite accurate enough. We're gonna take two decimal places. We'll take 14, Point one, and then that needle is just between point 0.1 and point 0.2. So I make that 14.14 millimetres. So we make our length 14.14 millimetres, and we can take the width in exactly the same way. From girdle to girdle, which is the widest point of the stone. I see about 12.11. 
So we have our length and we have our width. Now, we could take an estimation from that alone and we could calculate what the average depth might be for a standard oval brilliant, but we can get to the back of this stone, so it's really easy. So these prongs are really useful for that. We can rest the bottom one on the keel of the stone, or the culé in a round brilliant, and the top on the table. I see seven point... <laughs> about 7.1819, something like that. I agree, 7.19. So I'm not going to ask you to do this calculation mm -hmm. in your head. I think I've exercised your brain too hard today. <laughs> yeah, you never knew that to be a gemologist, you had to be a mathematician. Mathematician, well. physician, yes. chemical. <laughs> Geologist. We've got some standard calculations that we can do. So the one for oval faceted gemstones requires us to know the, the length and the width of the material and the depth, which we've already done. We do need to know the specific gravity of this material, which is why I told you it was blue topaz. Fact check for topaz, the SG is about 3.5 to 3.6, usually about 3.52. So when we put all of our numbers together, we get 9.3. What do you think? I think that looks great. I think we did good. I love it, great job. <laughs> what we've done today is get a great feel for what these materials possess or the properties of, of these materials. And the more we do that, the better we're gonna get at identifying just from our senses. So let's say we've got a material with no facets or no flat polished faces. We can't look into it because it's opaque or near opaque. We can't put it on our refractometer because there's no flat polished face. We can't test its absorption spectrum because it doesn't have any color, for example. We still can assess its specific gravity. And the values that we can compare it to are often quite specific or unique to some gem materials. And when we have a material that looks similar to something else, it can differentiate so easily between them. Samantha, thank you so much for being on the channel. Uh, we loved having you here. Thank you for explaining these properties and giving us these examples. Gemstones.com is a great resource for you to learn about some of these constants, some of these values of all sorts of gemstones. So head on there if you want to learn more about these and a variety of other gems. And don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Thanks for watching. Thank you.